we're looking at our colourful best. Hello, Mrs. Lumsden. Morning. Your your nose and cheeks are the same colour as your coat. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, so is mine. I'm quite orange. Is that fake tan that I keep putting on? So we're off again on our travels. As you can see, the British summertime is uh, is dealing its worst hand. But we've got to crash on, got to crash on. It's all right, you liverboards, you people who have this life of leisure where you can just say, oh, I'll sit today. We have things to do, agendas to meet, schedules to get ahead of. So I'm working tomorrow in Nantwich. So need to get closer. I've got a, a workmate going to be picking me up uh, en route. She's coming up from Gloucester. So we're heading today. We've just left Church Minshall, beautiful place. And we're heading today for Rembry cum Frith. So uh, it's about a seven, seven and a half hour cruise. So we've got to do that irrespective of weather. We've left it as late as we can because it was pretty crap this morning. It's now quarter to 11 and uh, the indications are it's an improving day. So let's hope that comes true. So yeah, Church Minshall was really pretty. It's very small, but the bit that we saw of it was great. Lovely pub, nice churchyard. Um, yeah, and the food, we spent too much money, so we can't keep doing that, but the food was glorious. So we're gonna crash on today. Uh, we've got quite a few locks to do once we get onto the Langothan, so um, gotta be done though. Langothan, yay! Waited eight years to do this. <laughs> eight years. Eight years since I got into boating. Eight years a slave, that's me. That's where we were last night. So it's a kilometre from it. That would have been a safer walk, wouldn't it? <laughs> that sign saying the Badger pub was a thousand metres from there. Yeah, I would advise to go for that. The the bridge that we came to was 13, was it? Yeah. Bridge 13, which was the shortest route to the Badger, but really dangerous downhill, no pavements, not even any verge to sort of get up. It was just like steep bushes at the side. And the cars were just not, not really recognizing we were there. So it was a bit scary uh, going there and back. So uh, yeah, come to, to bridge. 11 uh, and, and take the path from there. I think you're going to be safer. Go away. So recently, Mrs. L, as you know, has done, been doing a lot more steering and um, she's mentioned a few times that there's a bit of an issue which seems to be coming about from steering. Let's interview Mrs. Lumsden and find out what's going on. <laughs> Mrs. Lumsden, tell me all about the problem that's uh, currently affecting you. Ow! My elbow hurts. No, you don't have to overact. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tell me about it. No, just notice. I suppose it's because we've been out two weeks solidly now that my elbow is starting to ache like it's got a bruise on it. Right. Um, and I could feel it if I've been standing here for more than an hour, definitely it's aching. I think the reason being is because when I'm like this, my elbow is either like that or it's down like that, but my shoulders aren't relaxed and I'm not working at a right angle. And it's because this is too high for me. If I jump like that or sit yeah. on the box. You'll give yourself two black eyes. <laughs> if I if I'm like a lot taller, yes. if that rudder was down there. That's the tiller, darling, the rudder's in <laughs> under the water. <laughs> <laughs> if the, look, I'm trying to sound really professional. I know, you're doing very well. If the tiller was down here. Slightly boring, but oh, yes. Okay. Carry on. No, no, you told me I'm boring now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh. That's the most you've ever said. <laughs> Four years we've been doing this vlog. And it's the last thing I'm ever going to say. Oh, when she started, we couldn't stop her. <laughs> but I do know of the issue. I've known of the issue. For the, for the four years since I've had the boat, I've always thought my tiller looks too high or it's at a strange angle. It's, it's, as it's coming from the stern, it's, it's rising upwards. Uh, and I look at it and compare it to other boats and it's, other boats aren't the same. So it almost, I think, needs some heat on the on the bend. The is it the swan neck? I don't know. Uh, 
uh, and then just at the, the very leading edge of the tiller was pushing down to, to see whether that will take it. I think is probably the best way around that. I don't know. I welcome your comments, but it, it actually makes my shoulder and elbow ache a little bit after a while. It is too high. Um, I think I have got a possible workaround, Mrs. L, but I'm not sure whether it'll look aesthetically pleasing but if it's temporary just for when you with your little legs uh want to do some steering then then that that's all right isn't it what i suggested to mrs l is i get some sort of other bar that comes here that i can just oh, look, at that. Look, look at that oh nice. fantastic so if i can drop like a couple of scaffold clips i mean obviously nothing as ugly as that but some sort of bracketry that I can just clip into place on the underside of that bar so we get a second bar running here and maybe just bring it a couple of inches further forward. Oh, yeah. And then that's gonna that's gonna help. But I think it's gonna look unsightly. But I can do it as a temporary as a temporary thing, I think. Until I can sort out the overall position of that tiller. Because it is a bit weird, don't you think? Let me know. Maybe I'm just being over the top about it. So, Mrs, what are your thoughts on marinas? Because they look nice. They've got all those facilities, haven't they? I just don't like being so close to the other boats. No, you're going to be looking into each other's bedrooms and kitchens and living rooms and, I don't know, it's all right if you've got those tinted windows and stuff, but I don't know. It's also all right if you're around the outside. It's when you're on the pontoons, isn't it? Mm. That's it. And also with the kind of, like, toilet smells. <laughs> That's not going to be too pleasant, is it? No, I don't want the toilet Sunday smells. Lunch and You've got somebody else's toilet smell coming into your room. It's a Banksy. Da 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 da. Oh, where's your sense of humour? Path Carnage. I do enjoy a cheeky little boat name, Mrs. L. Marina, the sister marina of Wilton, where We May was purchased. Oh, look at all that. Give that for I told you yesterday. Hurlston Reservoir and when we've got past this we'll then turn into the Pangothan Canal, new virgin territory for us. Yeah. So here we are, this is Hurlston Junction, which is the start of the Langothan Canal.
boat that we're approaching that's moored over there on the left, we started noticing smoke coming from the bow doors. As we approached it, it was getting even worse. So I quickly went into reverse, dashed inside to get some fire extinguishers. Uh, and then the guy suddenly appeared holding some sort of component that was really smoking. I've got no idea what was going on, but uh, it had me really worried. going to be a massive incident but I tell you what just goes to show doesn't it how things can suddenly occur suddenly happen he looked quite embarrassed about the situation so I don't know what he was doing I mean, come on, what chance do you stand getting your front end to go into that lock? So he can see that the bow is starting to wash to the left. Then having straightened that, the water pressure is now pushing the stern to the left, which then sent the bow back to the right. And impact. And another. That's the last lock of the day. This is badly lock one. So we're, we're going to moor up about a mile and a half along that way down to uh, Renbury Cunfrith. Um, we'll have a look, look around what's there. Here we are coming into Renbury. Let's see what we have to do with this. As you know, boaters have a fantastic relationship with horseflies. They're bastards. And um, anyway, they do love a little taste of Mrs. L. So I'm going to be careful with this next shot because uh, we could enter uh, realms of indecency. But you just need to have a look at what <laughs> this horsefly has done to Mrs. L's inner thigh. <laughs> I like the look of Renbury so far, very nice, very picturesque. And we found a pub. I think you like the look of the pub. 
superb and in fact it's got uh, book isn't that right? The Dusty Miller, yeah, football's on tomorrow as well, good. Excellent. This seems to tick all of the boxes. So here we are at Dusty Miller's. Here's their menu. Mrs. Lumsden has gone for the Thai green chicken skewers. And I think I'm going to go... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm thinking I possibly could be there. No, I always have steak. Yeah. I might go Can I for... Can for you? No, I might go for chicken tikka masala, oh. even though... I didn't think you'd go for that. No, no. I thought you'd go for bangers and mash. No. I had, Why? Because I had steak and ale pie last night, which is a bit like bangers and mash, isn't it? Is it? Is it mm. really? To Meat, be... <laughs> potatoes, vegetables. That's what that was. I might go for the chicken schnitzel. Don't you dare. Why? Because that I'm choosing between the chicken schnitzel and the Thai green chicken skewers. And whichever art you have, if I don't have that one, then I'm, and it looks nicer than mine, I'm going to be a little bit miffed. Miffed. <laughs> Your favourite word. Okay. <sighs> I could and just I'll go. What, no, I, no I'm, going, but I'm going with the burger. So, it's been a while since I've done joke of the day, joke of the day. I think we only did twice, probably. On different vlogs, but anyway. So I was walking through Southampton and noticed this really nice house, beautiful house. I said to the to my mate, "Look at that! That is a is a fantastic house." He went, "Yeah, I know the guy who, li who lives there." I said, "Well, how does how does somebody lot you know own a house like that? He's, he's got a Porsche, a Maserati, a Ferrari on the drive. There's a couple of thoroughbred horses running around in the garden. Do you know what I mean? The house is just amazing. What on earth?" He said, oh, well, you see, the thing is, he works for Cunard. I said, yeah, well, I work for Cunard as well, but I don't have any of that. So drinking in here now. I do love an old photo. It's pretty, isn't it, Mrs. Dell? Okay. This will be the old mill stream, this. So, Dusty Millers, you definitely seem to have come up with business. Are you happy with your Thai green skewers, Mrs. Yes. Dell? Wowzers. Wowzers. And my burger looks divine. <laughs> Excited. Church of the day. <laughs> Don't shush me, Mrs. L. Enjoyed that last night, didn't you? It's often, you know, you look at the life that I had this guy, Frank James. He died aged 10 months. And also William Henry, he died at 17 years old. And then Peter died three months. Kind of one family touched by sadness. Sharples, did you pit? Could find nothing more on Gunner William George Sharples. Interesting that he died in 1947. Was that another conflict or did he die as a result of war wounds from World War II? That's a long time. Well done, Private Gregory of the Cheshire Regiment. First World War. So, Private Gregory died whilst on active service in World War I in 1918, literally 16 days prior to the end of the war. So he actually died from pneumonia, um, he succumbed to that. I just wonder how many others died of disease rather than wounds. So I found a really nice written piece on Frederick Ely 
Um, he was a Spitfire pilot. His Spitfire P9398 went down in flames off Folkestone Harbour. Boatmen and service personnel brought him ashore and Fred's body was recovered from the cockpit. <laughs> Get your wine. Got my wine. I've got your two sausage rolls. Oh, that'll do. 